Yeah, so we can do it. I don't know the words. How do you know? How do you know the words? Like I, you, do you know you have a YouTube channel? Do you know that when I commented on your shit the other day on Facebook, you hadn't made a post in like a long time. Do you know you have music videos on your Facebook? Do you know that you're in them? Like when I searched, I typed in Brandel Rector and a bunch of videos came up and I was playing them. I'm like, who do you think singing? And man is like, I don't know who is it. I'm like, that's Brandel. I don't know. I don't ever go on Facebook. What are you? On Facebook is like communist? Messenger. Are you aware that you're kind of famous? I'm just on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. On the gram, huh? How many times? Yeah. You're on the gram? I'm in that age group. How long were you I'm in prison? Gram, huh? I spent one day in juvenile hall. That's not prison. What for? Blowing up fireworks in a city cemetery. Blowing? You mean lighting fireworks? Well, <laughs> were you blowing up, up headstones? We were using black cat mortars. Do you know what's a lot? You know what's more impressive than that? When the fireworks store catches fire. Have you seen all those? Yeah. <laughs> but, I like. I, I like spent, when it, I spent a night. I like it. I like it when a, a California neighborhood get together and they sneak all those fireworks across the state lines and then store it in bill shed and then bill shed catches on fire those are the best that's what we were doing like we were just we'd go across to get m60s or m80s yeah. i mean yeah. what are you bringing back nothing we used to put those in chiclets our pool in hey, the what, pool? Underwater. yeah the plastic yeah. like the m60s were waterproof yeah. they had the um, green fuse what uh what podcast is this 24. 24. Are you sure? 24? Pulling the sure. Thread podcast, episode 24. 24, huh? All right. Can we kill this? Oh, what, what are it, we killing? It actually is this bright. <laughs> I'm like, can you turn the lights off? John's head is sweating. <laughs> All right. So, uh, your boy. Whose boy? Tucker Carlson. Tucker, yeah, Tucker. So, what What do you think happened? Well, there's, there's, there's a couple things going on, but uh, the problem with, for Tucker is... He went after. Can you have the squeak taken out of my chair? He went after the biggest. He went after the biggest sponsor, Pfizer, that news media's have, and that's Pfizer. Pfizer does seventy percent of news media sponsors, and you can't get on TV and be like, "Hey, our sponsor's killing you." And he did that. And uh, BlackRock bought twelve percent of. Yeah, and them he did that a couple of days prior, apparently. Well, here's the here's the reason why they the reason why BlackRock did that is because <laughs> this. You have any pay attention to all these major companies that are all that are, the same fucking people, but that are collapsing. Okay. Budweiser, Fox news. They have CNN. huge CNN. Well, CNN's always CNN's you kind of just another barely bank. survival. Last night they announced mm -hmm. they're taking over another bank, but they, uh, the feds, they have huge <laughs> amounts of money that they have to pay out to shareholders. And so if you, for example, SOE, if you had a bunch of shareholders and you knew some shit was getting ready to happen and you have a lot of cash on hand, almost all major corporations have huge stacks of cash right now because of what was going on during COVID. And so you have this big pile of cash. You also have to pay out on these shareholders and there's a storm coming. So what companies are doing is they're purposely imploding their companies tanking their stocks so that they can buy those stocks back penny on the dollar right so okay. anheuser-busch yeah. is going to buy all its stock back because it's its shareholders are going to be like fuck i need to take my money and put it in fox news and so anheuser-busch gets to buy all their stock back which gives them better footing for the future at hand Fox News fires their number one guy. Highest paid. Highest paid, and his, and their stocks immediately tanked. So Bur uh, old Murdoch is going to buy all his stocks back up, and he's going to be holding all the keys to the castle when this uh, financial switcheroo happens. That's what all the big companies are doing, and that's why they're tanking their own stocks. Do you think, uh, do you think Tucker Carlson was relieved to be let go? I, I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta imagine that, uh, that he, that he's better off. 
I think so. What do you I think? Is, so what do you think his play is? I think he's already started a podcast. <laughs> I think the only place to get news now is from a podcast. I, yeah, I think real yeah. news yeah. from a and podcast, not on YouTube. Yeah, yeah not on so YouTube. Rumble. Yeah. So I think you're going to see the government go after Rumble, right? I think they're going to use this uh, Secure Act or whatever to attack Rumble because Rumble is where everybody that's being pushed from YouTube goes. Like when Dan Bongino went over, Dan Bongino had I think he had a million on YouTube, and then he went to uh, Rumble, this little non-known, you know, nothing like mm -hmm. YouTube on, in size and had, I think he had like 5 million by the end of the week, right? Which shows that YouTube was suppressed, you know, suppressing his viewers. <clears throat> and then you had, um, who just left? Somebody else just was, uh, Crowder. Crowder went over, left YouTube, went over to Rumble and immediately in one day, 5 million people came over. And that's when YouTube just changed all their rules, right? We're not allowed to put a link to our our right. videos over there on Rumble or, you know, whatever. Um, Tim Pool hosts, they use the Rumble servers and host all of their show over there. And then they do the after show. So they do it at, I think, 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock. They have a guest on or whatever. And then um, from 9 o'clock to 11, or maybe they don't even come on till 11, they do a, a, a live on Rumble for viewers, uh, subscribers, and that's where they cuss and they talk about all the stuff. And you'll you'll even see them throttle their guests back when they're going down a path that that YouTube will cut because people that were co-hosts with him at, at one point said that they're making um, over a million dollars a month on revenue from those lives on YouTube. Hmm. Maybe we need to rumble. Well, that's on YouTube, right? So that's why they, they throttle that shit back. I don't know what they're making on Rumble, but we do have a Rumble. Everything we post here is on Rumble. Auto post to Rumble. Now, I don't know how the private content works over there, but I don't know. We'll figure it out. It's probably a key of a button, slide of a button, right? And one up, one down. And for everybody on the left who is excited. This is how I scratch, like when I used to DJ. Is excited that Tucker Carlson got. Who's, who's that? <laughs> On the, everybody on the left who's excited that Tucker Carlson got taken off Fox I News. I don't believe those people exist, right? I think mm -hmm. there's very few of them. I think the rest are just bots. Like, I don't think AOC is a real person. Because because of the half a trillion dollars that Fox News has to pay to Dominion. Um, for the truth? For the truth. But here's the thing. Uh, <laughs> BlackRock owns both Dominion and Fox News. So the only thing that's, that's going to happen out of this whole thing is, nothing. is a major... A super major corporation that owns almost everything that you buy, Lefty. Um, they're going to get a half a trillion tax write-off because they're going to pay themselves this lawsuit. And that is why they did what they did. And that's why they didn't take it into court. Because the reality is there is, in, a, in the courtroom, Dominion has no... Play, no footing to stand on that they were harmed by Tucker Carlson's or by Fox News's <clears throat> reporting. What do you think for a for a leftist? What do you think winning looks like? What's their goal, right? To kill us? Do you think they want to just have things and be happy, or do you think they want to eliminate no, people they don't know? They here's the thing: when when you're on the left, if you're if you're left extreme, right? So if you are a member of Antifa or any of those organizations, they have no happy meter. They have no capability of being happy. There's always going to be something for them to be angry about. Somewhere, somehow, there's, they feel like there's just that they are champions of injustice and they have to fight it. And the reality is they are the problem. And when, the, when, the, when you look at winning, right, when you, if you're the left and you look at winning, and let's say, I don't know, that the, the leftist leftist is now president of the United States and they run everything. Well, isn't the leftist leftist the president not, of the United States? Not yet. Um, you, lefty, out on the street who is fighting for justice, you will be instantly fucking killed. So that's where I'm going, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's say you're the, the left. You're the, you're the first, in a communist takeover, you're the first people they kill. Let's say, yeah, so that's, what I was gonna, that's where I was going with this. So let's say the left wins, right? There's no more MAGA Republicans, because that's what they call yeah. us, right? They look at videos from... They look at videos that I put up before I even knew who Donald Trump was, right? He wasn't running for president. Mm -hmm. He wasn't going to be president. And they're like, oh, figures, uh, maggots, right? Or MAGA Republic, you know, maggots. Okay, whatever. Thanks for showing up on a video from 12 years ago. Right. Um, but let's say all of us disappeared, right? They sent us to Mars, and now they, they rule the world. 
those people are you're going to war, right? They're going to they want no, to not, reduce your population. They're, they're not going to war. They're not going to go to war. The lefties aren't going to go to war. They're going to get rounded up and systematically exterminated. Hold them more. They don't have a that's capability they, of going yeah, to war. That's what they did. That's what they did. And, and you might know this place. It's called Ukraine. You might want to look at what Ukraine is famous for uh, in history within the last hundred years or so. Like they starved all those people. They literally put a wall around Ukraine and starved all of those farmers. You might want to look up what Kulak means because that's going to be you. Like that's what's going to happen to you. The puppet masters that pull the strings, they don't want, they don't really believe the climate change stuff, right? They want to control you, right? They, they don't believe that they should not fly. They believe that you should not, should fly. not fly, right? They don't believe that people shouldn't travel to exotic places, right? They just don't want you there when they travel there. So they're figuring out how to eliminate you. And it, they don't realize that. They're really good at manipulation and getting people to fight with each other. And when you're fighting with each other, you're not building anything of your own. I mean, the reality is, if you think about what's going on right now. <clears throat> what is the, going on? The left, when you think of the left, right, and historically, the left has always been the outside is always been the outside, the, uh, the, you know, the group that is fighting for the homeless or the group that's fighting for like Woodstock equal or rights. Hippies. Yeah, hippies. Now the left is the major supporter of every corporation. Like the left is the, they, the, they, the they, left they, is their own enemy. They use that word fascist and Nazi and they don't realize they don't that they know what it is. Nazi, yeah. They have they are, no idea. Yeah, they are fascist Nazis. I mean, your uniform even looks <laughs> <laughs> no. I know. I just saw. I just saw a video of uh, some Antifa. Uh, it's it, they're so funny. These people are so funny. So this Antifa guy goes over. I don't know what the, I don't know what the protest was. But there's like four protesters on one side of the street, and all these Antifa assholes on the other side of the street. And these four Antifa guys go over, and they start yelling at the these four old ladies that are on the other side protesting. Whatever. It's probably abortion. My my guess. And they start yelling at him. And this lady walks over, and you see her. She says something. And then this Antifa guy pulls out a can of pepper spray and starts pepper spraying everybody. The old ladies? Yeah, all the old ladies. And so they run. And then some more Antifa guys come over, and this guy sneaks behind them and goes back to his corner, right? And so the police are like, all right, let's go. Because they, they're, they're using a drone to watch all this, right? And so they go over there and it's now time to apprehend pepper spray guy. Right. And so they're going to apprehend pepper spray guy. And instantly all uh, the whole Antifa, he didn't do anything. What are you going after him for? Like it's, it's, Oh, what was me? What was me? I didn't do nothing. I'm perfect. Leave us alone. And then they get him and they're They got him on the ground. And this lady comes over, this other Antifa person comes over and hits one of the cops with an umbrella. And they're like, arrest number two, assault on an, <laughs> it's just, and they're the whole time they're just screaming like the world is against them when they are the ones that are committing the assault. They are the ones that are committing actual crimes. I it's just it, one of two things are going to happen. Really, one of two things are going to happen is the government is going to understand that it the government is going to understand that it doesn't have the control it thought it had for the takeover of this country. I think they're finding that out right now. And they're going to try and they're going to they're going to try and push back to the center. Or they're going to keep going, they're going to keep going down this radical agenda and they're going to get pushed back. To and they're the going to get pushed back. There's going to be a point where unfortunately, you know, cuz the, the only reason why Antifa exists is because Law enforcement refuses to squash well, them. Yeah, because law enforcement's hands were tied, right? They basically, municipalities were tying their hands, whether that was firing all the officers or doing all the stupid, uh, you know, defund the police bullshit that how's they're that, all regretting yeah, now. Yeah, how's that working in San um, Francisco right now? They were, that is the issue. And so there's going to be a point that if, if law enforcement can no longer, if law enforcement can no longer contain these people, then regular citizens are going to take up arms. And it's going to be a serious problem for that community. Because, again, the problem with a tidal wave is a tidal wave does not give a fuck what you, you know, 
how how, you, how, how to, good you are, how bad you are. Tidal wave doesn't. It's just gonna swipe. It's just gonna sweep all that bullshit back into the ocean. Where do you think that'll happen first? Where would it happen first? I, mean, I feel like I feel like uh, I feel like I feel like California is like on the verge. Right. Of so some we always serious say problems. we always say California or New York, right? Everybody knows New York because of New York City, but the majority of New York yeah. is not that fucking insane place. You know, there's there's a lot of people out there. So I feel like because the, here's the thing about New York City, New York City. Has the largest has the largest law law enforcement uh, largest police department in the world, as far as municipalities go. So but it's so fucking urban and built up and tall. Uh, well, yeah, I'm just talking different, about New York City warfare. In, yeah, New York City in general. Where California, you have your 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 population spaces. So even if you think about Los Angeles, it's spread out. It's not smashed onto a small island. So it's spread out. So ten thousand officers. When you have 10,000 officers in New York City, that's a lot of cops. That's cops that you can see all the time. If you're in Los Angeles, there are certain places you can see police all the time, but there are places you can go in Los Angeles where you won't ever see a cop. Right. In and, the hood. And so, Cal, I mean, California, it's it's on the verge of a breaking point, I think, just because the the – the liberals, it's completely liberal owned. So the liberals have completely taken over the uh, the House and the Senate and the you know the governor. They're all complete liberals. Most cities are very liberal centric, and they're doing nothing for the homeless problem. They're doing nothing for the 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 poor people within the community. They're not doing anything for anybody but themselves. They're you know, uh, oh Gavin Newsom's going to wine tasting while everybody else is secluded in their house with masks on. So there's a point where there's a point where the serfs are going to rise up and Pull smash the, the bill from the castle. Yeah, maybe. How long? I don't know, man. What's the catalyst going to be? You you never know what the catalyst can be. Like when you think of like what's going on in Iran, they the Iranian uh, special police kill people all the time. It just took that one girl. Yeah, the KGB everybody. Yeah. It, yeah, it just took that one girl to create the to create the protests that they're having over there. And right we now. only know it because of social media. Maybe yeah. that's why they're going after social media control so hard right now. Maybe. And well, uh, I, find had, hard, I find it hard to believe they can't just turn it off as it is. You had that asshole in charge of the Democratic Party just come out and say that uh, Congress should be allowed to tell the news what they can say and what they can't say. Uh, like, the truth, a hundred, not even, maybe not even a hundred years ago, 50 years ago, 50 years ago, the other senators would have grabbed Chuck Schumer and drug him out and kicked him out of Congress for saying some shit like that, for, for restricting the First Amendment like that. But that's where we're at. We're, we're at a point where people think restricting the First Amendment is okay because they're idiots. First off, you're, you're a complete idiot when you, when you say that uh, you know uh, a Nazi shouldn't be able to spew his, his hate because – Eventually, it's going to turn around, and it's going to be you that they're censoring. And if you've given those assholes the power to censor, let's just say Fox News. You've given them the power to censor Fox News. That power does not go away when you lose your seats in the House. Well, it's like that tax, that that 1% tax or that 2% tax for the war effort. Yeah, it doesn't go away. It, It doesn't go away. They're going to keep that power, and they're going to use it to censor you. That's why, again... If you're if you're in a marginalized if you feel like you're in a marginalized community, you need to start shouting to the rafters about the republic. The republic. What's a marginalized community? Well, it it depends on it depends on the person, right? Well, like you just said that. What would you Well, would you know, you, right now you have the LGBTQ screaming that they're a marginalized community, uh, you know, uh uh fringe little little pockets not the norm so lately i've lately i've heard them called protected right protected groups like what the fuck is a protected group if you're all fucking human beings don't you have the same rights like 
go do what you want to do. Just stop trying to make everybody well, else fucking a spec. Try and stop making yourself a spectacle. You have to. Uh, you have to make. Your, they're, what they're doing by doing that is trying to tell them that they're special because they've been marginalized. So we're gonna. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put you on a can of Budweiser, and you are no longer marginalized because you're special. When in reality, it doesn't. It doesn't work. Like Did you see, Budweiser fired the the second fucking marketing person and the VP has been yeah, removed. Yeah, I mean, whatever. whatever. That's just that's just the politics of the game. It's like uh, um, Florida passed a law that you can't ex- you can't uh, you can't exploit children anymore, and the losing their fucking minds over it. <laughs> well, the, here's the thing: the LGBTQ community um, they canceled the Pride Parade. Because they can't exploit minors anymore. So they they canceled the Pride Parade in protest of not being able to exploit minors anymore. I mean, you, you guys are writing your own <laughs> your own epitaph. It's just it's it's crazy. This is just crazy. This is a crazy, crazy world that we're allowing to happen. But then again, you know, we're 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 at a point like if if how long have people been talking about the collapse of the dollar? You know, we're at a point. We're at a we're at a point in American history where something may very well happen, right? Something may very well, there may be a, let's say there's a shift in the guard. There's a, there's going to be a shift in the guard. Again, what you need to recognize is the rich always survive whatever it is, right? They always survive whatever it is. World War One, the, the rich survived. Didn't, World didn't War II, them. World War Two, the rich survived. <clears throat> Um, the the rich will always survive. So they're consolidating their empires right now. They're get, they're consolidating their empires right now because again, if we go to war with China, if we were to go to war with China, well, I talk about how corrupt and worthless the Chinese uh, equipment is. There's nothing saying that we couldn't lose, right? That there's nothing that says that, especially if you're your leaders or yes. the people that pull those Be- strings from within because the, the sabotage i mean it looks like we're being sabotaged right now because the the weak leadership that we have currently in the military and i'm talking about all you four star generals you guys are punks because you're letting miley ruin uh our services did you see the did you see the drill instructor video i sent you a i, day can, or two I ago? couldn't i tried to get it i couldn't i couldn't look at okay, it okay so it's it's army i thought it was marine corps from what they'd said but it's so it's army and the army is at um, boot camp, mm. and you're watching a cell phone video of this drill instructor dress down this female recruit, and she's just talking back, like talking back. It goes on for probably two minutes. It's not uh, so. Not only is there a fucking cell phone recording it, the dude in front of the person recording it is also fucking around on a cell phone. So they're at basic with fucking cell phones. Um, while it, while it sounds crazy to you, John, uh, the truth, the truth on that is the army has been that way for a long time. The army's been that way for a long time. I, I, unfortunately, and it's probably not the same in combat arms MOS. I'm willing to bet that this was not, that these people were probably like at truck driver boot camp, not in the combat MOS, but even still, for example, and I'll give you an example. When I went to jump school, um, you got the you got the black hats, <clears throat> and the black hats. When you think about a black hat from a from a marine perspective, that's right? a drill instructor. Yeah, he's basically he's the guy in charge, right? The black hat is the fucking airborne ninja. He's the guy in charge. He gets you from to and from, and so you kind of look <laughs> at him like a drill instructor. Um, and so I didn't realize this. But they would put the Marines in charge of all the squads. I've so, heard you say that. Yeah, before. they put the Marines in charge of all the squads. And I just thought, you know, it's because Marines are better. Eh. But the reason why they did that was because Marines would use both emotional and physical punishment to get those squads to be where they needed to be, ready to go, doing what they needed to do. And the black hats the army could be like oh well that's just the marine corps we don't do that the ar- we don't do that the army doesn't do that stuff but that's just the marine corps the Mar- that's the way the marine corps runs you just need to you just need to do what those marines are telling you and get in line because they'll fuck you up cuz i don't know what they're going to do 
because it's the Marine Corps. Those motherfuckers are crazy. They eat their puppies, right? And so that's what they're telling the regular Army soldiers. So they're, they're getting in line because of these Marines. And, again, I didn't know any of this. And we're – I can't remember what we're doing, but it was end of lunch. And, you know, everything is – everything is pretty uh, – it's – Everything is scheduled in the military, right? From when you eat lunch, when you get done with it, it's all scheduled. And you're on the schedule clock at jump school. And this female soldier, man, now that I think about it, I look it back, I bet she was getting laid. This female soldier shows up and she's late. Her boots are untied. And so she's, she's I think she was 20 minutes late for formation. She comes in, her boots are untied. Now, my black hat... Mind you, gave me a concussion on the swing landing trainer. Like he was a real dude, but my black hat was a real dude. And this female soldier comes running up, and I'm like, "Oh, she's gonna get, she's she's toast. He's gonna he's gonna tear her ass up right here in front of everybody." And he's like, "Corporal So and So, you know you're late for formation." And she's talking back to him, and he's like. Your boots are untied. You need to tie your boots. You need to blouse your your pants. And he is just talking to her like just some regular schmo. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And then he, she fixes herself. She gets in formation. And so later on, because uh, my buddy, he was he was actually in the 80s. This guy was in the 82nd Airborne with my, my high school buddy, Dave Eaton. And so Dave called him and was like, hey, make sure Scully gets a lot of swing landing trainer. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. And uh, and so I knew the guy. I'd actually I'd actually gone to a party with him before jump school, so I knew the guy. And so I'm like, oh, "What the fuck? What? Why didn't you tear her up? Why are you giving her slack? Is it because she's a girl?" He's like, "No." And then he explained it all about how you know they can't they can't yell at these guys. They can't. It's just they're just babysitters. Move them to and from, can't do nothing. And that was that was 20 years ago. Is that because people become so soft that they have to get the numbers through? It's because people become so soft that they have to get the Whereas numbers through. Whereas if we'd have failed them or killed a few of them before, we would just rely on the draft to fill the numbers? Or what? what's what's the Well, difference? when you, you, you have to look at it this. You have to look at the unfortunate part of the Department of Defense and Big Army is it's not – I'm going to blow your minds. It's not about efficiency. It's not about proficiency. It's not about having the best military in the world. It's about having the biggest military in the world. Because as long as you can have a big military, then you can have generals. And the more generals you have, right, the bigger the Department of Defense is. And so it's all about that. It's all about that class, that ruling class. They want that ruling class to be big. In order to have a bunch of four-star generals, you got to have a bunch of smos down below. Those four-star generals don't give two shits. They don't give two shits whether special forces is special or rangers can range. They really don't care. Now, the cool thing about rangers, and it used to be the cool thing about special forces. Sorry, guys, but you when you went to battalion sizes, you lost your you lost what it was to be special forces. The cool thing about rangers is. Because it's so young, because they're so young in the Ranger Battalion, and because they repopulate the Ranger Battalions with other with older Rangers, right? So the you know the Sar Major of Ranger Battalion is a Ranger. He's always been a Ranger, and he's always been at Ranger Battalion. That those guys force excellence, right? They force excellence within the Ranger Battalion. It's the it's it's the Ranger Battalion that is requiring excellence. The U.S. Army could give a shit. The four-star general that is in charge that those rangers fall under, he'd give a shit if those guys can fucking, if those guys can do any of the mission profiles that they do. They don't care. As a matter of fact, the four-star generals don't like ranger battalion because ranger battalions are so small, right? They would rather have, the reality is, the, the industrial complex would rather have tank divisions than ranger battalions right there's no money in building rangers there's, there's no yeah there's no tanks. money in building tanks, rangers and tanks tanks and need ammo tanks need all that stuff and it's just it well again as you climb the ladder you need a big pyramid and so to have all the fucking generals that we have now you have to have a ton of people that are in service that 
that are really worthless. Like there is, there are so many people in service that are worthless. Like what we really should do is we should, we should, well, first off, we should fire every fucking star, every star wearing general there is because the fiasco of Afghanistan and Iraq is completely on their shoulders. They lied to Congress and they lied to themselves. Um, but the Marine Corps should get cut down to uh, probably 10,000 guys. How many are there? There's 130 some thousand Marines. Should they say sir and ma'am? Of course. You know, they just removed that. Well, I mean, whatever. It's, it, that's why I'm saying that you have a, you have a commandant right now. It, it's, it's interesting. Both the Army and the Marine Corps have people in charge of them right now that are doing everything they can to destroy the structure and foundation of what has made those units great, right? They're doing everything they can to weaken the service, not make them stronger. Like the the vision, the commandant right now, the vision he has for the Marine Corps, not only not only does it completely not work, it's not even, fi- he can't even finance it. Like this whole stupid thing with the, and you, you haven't got into it, but the littoral combat units, they're, they won't have they won't have the ship capability to lift those guys for thirty years. What's a littoral combat unit? It's this new combat unit that they're trying to uh, create within the Marine Corps that is supposed to be the model, and it's it's terrible. It's just it's they got rid of existing equipment for the idea of having future equipment. They don't have future equipment. So right now the Marine Corps like spaceships or what? No, no, it's it's uh, it's it's the MLRS systems. It's uh, it's these uh, new fighting ships. Like they want these littoral combat ships. So wouldn't that be the Navy? Well, the Na- the Navy don't want to take on these vessels. So the Marine Corps is getting ships. The Marine Corps wants to get ships, but they're not going to get them. The reality is, like, there's a whole breakdown on it. even if. Even if Congress approved all this and and they're like, yes, go ahead and do it, we don't have the capability because they want thirty nine of these vessels. How big are these? Uh, they're as big as they're they're probably a little bit bigger than an LST. What's an LST? Oh, well, I don't know how to explain that. Landing ship tank. So like an LCAC? W- way bigger than an LCAC. Okay. They're 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 big, but they're not big. Okay. But the but again. Even if it was approved, we had all the money in the world. They can only build two of these ships a year, which means by the time they get the 39 ships they need, the first five ships are already going to be ready for the scrapyard. So they'll never have the, they'll never have the vessels that they're required. It's just, he's, I believe that the current commandant of the Marine Corps and old Miley, their only purpose is to create a military service that does not have the capability to fight in the future. Intentionally. Yeah, intentionally. I believe that that's what they're doing. They're intentionally undermining the ability of the U.S. to fight in the future. Now, To, to what end? I mean, well, we know Miley. Miley's on the payroll of the Chinese. Like, we, we already know this. He specifically said that if Trump was to go to war with China, that he would call China and be like, hey, we're going to go to war with you. That... It's treason. Not only that, they put it out public. Like, yeah, that's do you, treason. Do you think all this stuff that Congress does, right? Do you think they're doing that for your benefit? Like, why would they even tell us that? Mm-hmm. It, you know, it's all it's all manipulation. I think they, I think they, I think they put that out there. This is this is what I think. It's kind of like porn. They put it out there. They put Miley's ass out there and was like, "Hey, let's see what happens." He specifically, he specifically was a traitor to the United States of America. He swore an oath to the president of the United States. doesn't matter who that president is. He specifically was treasonous, and we didn't do anything about it. What that tells everybody in politics is they can do whatever the fuck they want, and no one's going to come with pitchforks and kick him out of office. They, they hung, I think they hung Miley out to dry. And found out, oh, wait a minute, guess what? We can do whatever. I mean, think about that. Who was it, Stillwell? Or, I can't think of his name, the senator from California, who was sleeping with a Chinese spy. Smallwell or something. Yeah, Smallwell. They didn't even take him off the intel committee. 
<laughs> and he was sleeping with a Chinese spy. What that tells you is they they feel so emboldened in, in D.C. that they can do whatever they want, and America will not care about it because they're because we're too busy worrying about you know what bathroom uh, what bathroom boys should use or um, how many LGBTs should be on the women's swimming team. We're we're worried about things that don't really matter. How long were you in the Marine Corps for? Twenty years. When did you get out? 2005, I think, or eight, maybe. Did you have any, what are, what are they, trannies? Did, did you have any? No. They uh, didn't exist. Did didn't you have, exist. Did you have any gay people? Uh, I'm sure there was gay people. Well, yes, I know there was gay people. Did you yeah. meet any of them? Yes. Did they do their job any differently than a normal Marine? Yes. They did? Uh-huh. Were they- well, the only, I, okay. The only reason why I knew that this person was gay was because he was going to the brig. He was going to the brig because he took a Marine that was a Marine reservist. He worked in admin and he took a Marine reservist and hid that Marine reservist at his house for (laughs) nine months. And because he worked at admin, he made sure that that Marine was getting paid. Right. And so he was up for a court martial. And when I was down at hazmat, they dropped him at hazmat and said, Hey, we're going to hold him here until his court martial. And we had conversations about we had conversations about what he was going to trial for and stuff like that and and he told me about like he's like, "Yeah, you just go over to the main side gym and hang out for a couple minutes and you're going to run into another gay guy." Like they I you know, I'm sure it's no different than I'm sure it's no different than like a female hookup or whatever. Yeah, like a female hookup <laughs> that you you just I guess you just smell what you you smell what you smell and what you're interested in. Secret handshake, whatever. The it secret is. handshake. Now, um, kind of a rare, I think, kind of a rare thing. It used to be kind of a rare thing. Was in that the because infantry, of but, like don't ask, don't tell? How are we going to know if you don't tell us? So don't fucking make uh, don't probably, skyline yourself. Probably, but I, I mean, I mean, the reality is there's so many people in the military that of course there was gays in the military. There's always been gays, but it was at what level, right? <clears throat> at what level of openness could you be could you be gay like i was on a west pack where i was on a west pack where some where some sailors got out of hand uh in the mail room and within 2 hours like it, it, basically what was happening was these sailors were hooking up in the mail room and one of the sailors i guess it was his first time and didn't like what was going down, so he, so he ran out of the mailroom naked, screaming bloody murder, uh, through the mailroom, Marine Corps birthing, rest of the ship. So he's so everybody's like, um, something's happening in there. Um, there's some shit going on, right? In less than an hour, so you in less than an hour, all three of those sailors were. On an airplane, we're, we're, we're on a helicopter, we're flown to one of the other ships, so they immediately took them off, they immediately took them off a big ship, flew them over to one of the, uh, one of the smaller ones, uh, not the LH, not the, not the, I don't know which ship it was, but flew them over to a small ship, and an hour from there, they were on their way to the aircraft carrier. Because that's a, there's a brig there, or why? No, 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 here? because... Because there would have been a fear, there would have been a fear that if, I mean, they always blame the Marine Corps, but there would have been a fear that those sailors would have, that that homosexual sailors would have never made it home, that we would have thrown Got them overboard, it. which was 100% not true. Because uh, they, they have a brig, they have a brig on the LHA, they could have put them in the brig, they'd have been fine. It's not like we would have rioted and fucking, it, it's bullshit, it's just bullshit. But, so... Th- there was that incident, and then I had an incident uh, on Twenty Nine Palms. I had an incident where twenty nine at Twenty Nine Palms, where a passed out, a passed out Marine uh, got a blowjob that he didn't ask for, and <laughs> he got a blowjob he didn't ask for, and from a male Marine or female, a male Marine, and uh, and that guy got hurt. How did he know that he got the blowjob? Because he woke up getting oh, a blowjob. Oh, getting job. a blowjob. Yeah. We got it. Yeah, he woke up getting a blowjob, and apparently, 
either the blowjob wasn't any good. So he was like asleep, or, not yeah. Well, not like well, he drunk, was, passed out or something. He, he it was there was alcohol. That was the problem. There was alcohol. It was, it was actually considered an alcohol incident. Uh, that marine got hurt. Not the the blowjob er got hurt. Not the blowjob e. Um, and he was immediately processed out. Uh, you know, what are you going to do? They're they they are everywhere. But again, there's a difference between there's a difference between being overt and covert. And I'm not saying you have to be covert, but again, you know, uh, I couldn't give a, I, here's the thing. I couldn't give a female Marine. Right. Cunnilingus in the barracks and not get in trouble. Same thing there, right? It's, it's inappropriate behavior. So I don't know. Well, it just comes down to consensual. No, uh, uh-uh. does not come down consensual because you can have consensual sex in the barracks and still get in trouble because it. it's the barracks. Right? Were there were there female Marines that were running prostitution? I mean, I'm sure there's look anywhere there's going to be anywhere there's yeah, young and men and young there's women. There's going to be prostitution, right? Uh, I didn't. It it didn't really rear its ugly head um, until we it, it like it's overseas thing. Like for some reason, overseas. Not only does the <laughs> When we're overseas, not only does it happen quite a bit, the services, they kind of support it. So, like, <clears throat> first Gulf War, they had they had women who were going home with duffel bags full of cash. Duffel bags full of cash. It's kind of hard to explain how you have a duffel bag full of cash. The service does not, the Marine Corps or whatever, Air Force, Navy, whatever, they don't want to go... Hey, we caught these we caught these airmen prostitutes with a half a million dollars in money because they were sucking dick in the barracks. Right? They don't want to do that. They they brush it under the carpet. That's the thing. Almost all this gets hidden away. They don't want you to know that this shit is going on because people will be like, "Oh my god, I can't believe that there's prostitution in the Air Force." And the Air Force is like, "No, there's not." Right? So they brush it under the carpet. Well, you you go to the next war, they know that there's prostitution going on. But what they do is they're like, <clears throat> all right, <clears throat> we got to figure out a way for dudes to spend their money on things that's not prostitution. And so when you get, when you get anywhere in the rear, so anywhere, anywhere in the rear with the gear, anywhere the air force is at, not necessarily the air force is doing, but anywhere in the rear. So if you're, if you're, on your way out of a combat zone and you end up on an air force base, you're going to find it. You're going to find these KBR tents where you can buy a Harley Davidson. You can buy a Cadillac. You can buy all these things. So you can put a little down payment tax on it. Tax free. Tax free. And then you got yourself a car, right? Are you, if well, you're making payments on it, is the entire car tax free? Or once you get in the States making payments, now it's taxed. I think it's all tax free if you buy it over there. Because they incentivizing not to buy pussy. Well, the idea is incentivized not to buy pussy. But what happens is, if you're in the rear with the gear, so if you're an Air Force, uh, I keep using the Air Force. Sorry, Air Force. It could be a sailor. Just because that's be, where they happen to be. Yeah, if you're, it could be a Marine, you know, but Marines don't pay for it. Um, if you're in the rear, you know, F-16 mechanic, what are you going to do? I know what I'm going to do. Hey, Tina. I'm going to buy you a Cadillac. What's up? So they, they, all Mm. these, they're buying all these luxury goods. And then the girl gets home and she's got 10 Cadillacs. (laughs) Oh, all right. We need to break. What if it was South Korea? Would you go to South Korea? Oh, you would go to South Korea. (laughs) I don't speak any Korean. How come, how come you're so big in Germany, but not in South Korea? Cause they have a regimented. Germans are weird. No, South Korea has a regimented music that they have to listen to. They can't listen to your, your type of music. Germans are into. Germans are just more free. I mean, David Hasselhoff, like you, you know how, are, you are in the same, you are in the same like boat as David Hasselhoff. Did you ever think you'd be like that? What's that? No. What's that clothing store that we have in the United States here? Like that's all fat girl clothing. I don't know. You're aware that there are stores. I'm like, sure there is. Yeah. And, and like Belk is all fat. It's not, I don't think it's Belk, but there's like stores that are big girl clothes. Right. But when you look at them overseas, <laughs> 
I saw some some TikTok and Instagram shit popped up. It was like they're pretty blatant. They're like Fatty McFatface, and like they've got all these stores that are just like blatantly, you know, big girl clothing stores, and 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 other shit that's along those lines, you know. But we're the only ones that are sensitive. About, well, well, I mean, I guess it is not in to, Japanese. You, it's, it's in English writing. You there. have to control the masses. Okay, so Tina Tina gets a Cadillac. Tina gets a Cadillac. She gets a and, and a Harley. She Aaron, gets, so and Bob pays for this, or yeah, that's can multiple how, dudes make the payments, or he's I just like sure. financed. He's like that pussy was worth a Cadillac for nine months. How long are they on deployment? Six, twelve, uh, just, 18? Yeah, it depends. Uh, Army he, was doing two. The and Army he bought, was doing two and years. he bought an entire Cadillac. Yeah. Come on. I mean, let's be realistic, John. You know dudes that would buy a Cadillac for that pussy, right? You know dudes that would do it. And you also know dudes. Can you that, afford to buy a yeah, Cadillac fuck yeah, you on can. one deployment? Fuck yeah, you can. You're you're getting a you're getting a pay you're getting a paycheck, you're sitting in the desert. Like if you're a, if you're a, you know, let's say you're a, a, a corporal, right? What's his paycheck look like? If you're a corporal, wait a minute now, you're a corporal okay. and you're in the desert. Okay. You're not, you're not spending money on anything like nothing. You're spending money on nothing. So you're getting, you know, let's just say in that time frame, if we go back to the first Gulf war or the, or the second Gulf war, I mean, they're getting, they get paid good now. What do they but get if, now? What's what's shit, a, what they're they probably paid, getting every two weeks? Yeah, they're getting paid every two weeks, and they're probably a a uh, e nothing is probably getting fifteen hundred for okay, so three grand a month, three grand a month. Okay, but again, no expenses. If you're a, if you are a e nothing, you have no expenses, right? So you're getting you're getting three grand a month. You have no expenses, and there's this girl that's going to suck your dick three times a week. Yeah, you're over there at the Cadillac place going. Let me, let me get this Cadillac. <laughs> let me let me get this Cadillac, right? And they don't care. He buys it in his name and makes the payments, and then gives it to her when she gets uh, home, or she puts it in. I no, I think I think they're doing the she in her name, right? But how? And and the military is allowing it to come from his bank account. Yeah, why not? They don't the, the mili the military uh the once they pay you like. Once they pay you, they have no, they have nothing, no lead, what you do with your money. Like, what do you think she does when she comes home? Sells Cadillacs. I mean, is she still selling the pussy? No, no, no. They go back to regular, regular army girl. Cause she's back with her Cause husband. Cause she's what? She's either back with her husband or it's just, it's just, there's a, there is a, there is a, a quantifiable difference from being deployed and being home meaning there are when you're home there are a million distractions right there's a million distractions there's other things going on when you're home when you're deployed all that stuff is gone the only thing that you the only thing that you're doing when you're deployed is mission so you know obviously if you're if you're an f-16 guy um your only job is to make sure that the you know the f-16 gets dusted off every day and then the rest of the time you're at the KBR tent watching movies from the seventies going, oh, what am I going to do? And then your buddy's like, Hey, every day at noon, third shitter from the right. Tina's over there giving blowjobs. <laughs> um, you should go check it out. Of, uh, of course, of course they're going to go check that out. Of course they're going to do that. And of course they're going to figure out a way to pay for those daily blowjobs that they're getting. Because so they all ain't these got girls nothing else get, to do. When these girls are all getting pregnant, where are they sneaking off to? Well, they're not really getting pregnant because it's 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 very heavy contraceptive, very heavy, uh, heavy blowjob orientated, heavy, you know. Because when you go, you have to have certain things. And one of the things that, one of the things that, uh, at least back in the 90s, um, female deployable females couldn't get pregnant like they signed a thing saying yeah i'm not going to get pregnant while i'm on deployment now it happened and they would send those girls back but again that would be one of those things that like for example if if john's over in saudi arabia and we're fighting the good fight against uh the bad guys and you get pregnant 
your command is going to be like, what, what the fuck, Tina? We told you not to get pregnant. Um, and you got pregnant, you know, we could charge you. And Tina's like, well, it's the captains. <laughs> oh, um, Hey Tina, this is what we're going to do. We're going to send you back on the next flight home. Uh, you're going to go back to the, you're going to go back to the regiment and you're going to work at the regiment while you're pregnant. They, they, it always gets swept under the carpet. It's not something that the Department of Defense is like, yeah, we took 100 girls over to uh, Afghanistan and 80 of them got pregnant. Because that's what you're doing is you're showing that you're not uh, mission complete, right? And that women shouldn't be in combat. Well, I mean, you know, that's here nor there. You're just showing that you're not mission complete, right? Which, again, like when I went on the deployment and all those girls, all those girls got pregnant off the gator ship. You have now you have other sailors that have to work double time because they lost those boat spaces. Th- those those fifty or those forty eight girls that didn't show up for deployment, their jobs still had to get done. Why don't they just fly replacements out? Because they don't. That's not how it works. A, a navy a navy crew's navy crewed. No, I get it. But if if we know this happens every fucking time, why don't they just have a fucking well, backup pool eh, to pull? Because from? again. If 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 I say if I go if I go John, we're gonna have a hundred women on board this next deployment, and you go. But are you gonna be mission effective? Are you gonna be mission effective? Or are all those women gonna finish the deployment? Right. And I say, well, there's a good chance that half of them won't make the deployment. Now that means you have to come up with an extra fifty guys that are sitting around to crew a ship that's already crewed. You already crewed it. You already gave me all the personnel I need. And what I'm telling you is there's no way I'm going to be mission complete. I'm going to be, I'm going to be mission capable in a hundred days because half of them are going to get pregnant. We're going to have to send them home. You don't want to hear that because again, what I'm telling you is it's easier for the Navy to go. It's easier for the Navy to go, Hey, Brandel, you know, those three other chicks that were doing your job, they're not going to be here. You're going to have to fucking paint twice as hard. Theirs and yours. It's easier for the Navy to do that than for the Navy because, again, that goes all the way up the chain of command. Do you do you want the do you want uh, to be a four star? Uh, you want to be an admiral in front of Congress, going, uh, we are, you know, we we can't we can't compete we can't complete mission because you're making us take all these girls. Do you think they ever just tell the truth? No, they don't ever tell the truth about that. They don't any any program, any program that is uh, a a social um, test bed that Congress wants to push forward. They don't ever tell the truth about it because it, it it and it, the reality is that it doesn't even matter if they tell the truth because like the Marine Corps, uh, the Marine Corps has been fighting this this female integration thing for a long time. And they actually did a real study where they did an integrated, they did an integrated infantry battalion, and then they did an all male infantry battalion, and they had a war. The integrated battalion got annihilated. Annihilated. Is there a is there um, an all female submarine? No, no, no. But they put females on submarines. They do put females on submarines. Do those now, get, do those get pregnant? I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, guess they can just. Surface it's not, and here's the, here's the thing. I, here's the thing. There's going to be some some female service members out there that are going to be like, oh, I was a good girl. It's okay. not, it's not all of them, right? It's there. There are, again, like I said, I went to, I went to a corporal's course with a, a female that I would have had I, from a purely logical point of view. She would have been as good in, in one of my Marine Corps fire, one of my Marine Corps squads as any of the men. Any of the men, but f- from a purely realistic point of view, her entry into those squads would have been a detriment to the whole platoon, not just the squad. Why? Because she was hot. That would have been a problem. Again, <clears throat> and not just and I'm just saying hot. I'm just talking about females. the 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 female can be the most squared away marine sailor airman. She could be spot on. Like she could be everything that you hoped that that soldier was going to be. 
and then you're integrating her into a squad of 18 to 20 year olds. Again, one of them wants to fuck her. One of them is fucking her. One of them hates her There's because two or three of them well, fucking her. One of them hates her because she's just her. One of them hates her because she's fucking the integrity of that squad does not exist anymore. It's not a fighting. It's not a fight. It's not a real fighting unit. Now services, the services pretend they run around and they pretend that none of that exists. <coughs> but again, there's no, there's no like train the hardest core, hardcore. You get the hardest core, hardcore uh, girls out there, train them to the, the standard of Delta force. And then give me a squad of average Marines and they will fucking wipe the floor with them. That's like the, you, you've seen the world cup, the female soccer team, right? The, the, the dyke chick with the purple hair. Oh yeah. Know? Yeah. They apparently that team, I don't, I don't know. Somebody on here will know, but that team played a, a squad of 14 year old boys and the 14 year old boys fucking wiped their ass. Like just fucking destroyed them. I mean, the truth is, the truth is out there. You know, the truth is out there. People don't want to believe in the truth. It's like Serena Williams. She played the 200th ranked. <coughs> she played the 200th ranked male in tennis. So he's the 200, I think it was 236 ranked male. Um, and she was soundly beat. Yeah, it's like your swimmer, right? And now. he, but he played a game of golf before he went to the tennis match. He went and had beer. It's just, you know, again, nobody wants to believe the truth that men, men and women are different. Not that men are better or women are better. We're just different. We were built for different things. And men are supposed to be out in the mud toiling, building bridges so that women can drive their carriages across them. Do you ever see any weird shit when you were in the Marine Corps? Like, did you see any puppy dog masks or any of the silly bullshit? No. No. Gimp that, that costumes, like, none of that shit. Again, just so in the time frame that I was in the, in the military... If a four, if a, if a star, if, well, not even a star, but any, any ranking officer were to put that fucking dog mask on and take a picture that his peers would see, he would immediately be fucking relieved of his command. He'd immediately been relieved of his command. Cause that's, that's unbecoming of an officer. He's that's dereliction of duty all the way. You can't, I can't be on the prices right in my Marine Corps uniform because when I'm in my uniform, I am, re I'm representing the service. So when he had his uniform on and that dog mask, he was representing the service. Is that what you want? Is it basically, <clears throat> is that, is that what the army is? A bunch of fucking dogs. I think they actually go on TV shows now in their uniforms. Again, even those, even those TV shows, when you see a, uh, when you see a Marine in uniform or a soldier in uniform on TV at the Price is Right at, uh, it's not the Padre Stadium anymore, at Jack Murphy Stadium, not even that anymore. And you Qualcomm, see them at a, Qualcomm, Qualcomm and they're, they're in their Charlies. That went all the way up to headquarters Marine Corps. They got authorization to do that. You can't like, I can't go to a Bernie Sanders even now as retired as a retired Marine. I can't put my uniform on and go to a Bernie Sanders rally, and it not be a problem. Now, what's the what's the Marine Corps going to do? The, basically, the Marine Corps is going to be like he's not in the fucking Marine Corps anymore. That's not a representation of the Marine Corps. But still, if you're in if you're in service in uniform. And you do anything to degrade the service. Because remember, the uniform represents the service, not you. It represents, that was a representation of the U.S. Army. And he was, and he was portraying the U.S. Army in an unfriendly light. He should have been relieved of command. They should have fucking drummed his ass out of the goddamn Army. And if he'd already retired, they should have fucking pulled him in and yanked his retirement check. That's the problem with what's going on in the world today. Is there... The you know there's no consequences for any be bad behavior. Can it be fixed? Yeah, with consequences. How fast? Mm. Probably a lot faster than we think, right? If 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 uh, yeah. I mean let's let's just let's just let's just say in 2024 we go to war with China, right? 
Let's say, let's say Ukraine, let's say this thing is still grinding out in fucking Ukraine. The Russians and <coughs> the Russians and the Ukrainians are still grinding it out over a fucking hundred yards of dirt. Are we hearing less about Ukraine right now? Or are they just not reporting it or people are just fucking done hearing it? No, it's, uh, it's not going the way we want it to go. The Russians are, uh, because the Russians have changed, because the Russians have changed their tactics and they are no longer, they, they are no longer in the, uh, you know, again, they're taking the kid gloves off. They, they tried to do a, they, they basically tried to do an American thing. They tried to zoom in to a country and everybody would just, and everybody would be waving flag. They tried to do an American thing and that was not going to happen in Ukraine. The Ukrainians, I mean, again, if you look at our stance on the Ukrainian war, before the, before the Russians crossed the line, we gave the Ukrainians three days. Like we didn't, when the Russians were, when the Russians were stacking hundreds of thousands of troops all around Ukraine, we didn't give the Ukrainians a fucking bullet because our leadership, Miley, um, our leadership was like, they're not going to last fucking 15 minutes. The Russians are going to, the Russians are going to take that country before we can even get anything over there. And so we didn't give them a bullet. The only reason why they're getting ammunition and guns and stuff from us now is because the Ukrainian people stood up and threw rocks and, you know, the reality is 50 year old tanks into the fight. Like they took all that cold war equipment. That the, <laughs> they took all the cold war equipment that the Russians left in Ukraine and fought the Russians with it. And they did such a good job that we had no choice, but to then go, Oh, Hey, wait a minute. I guess you guys are going to be on the winning side. So that's why we're, that's the only reason why NATO or anybody is even giving a shit about Ukraine is because of what the Ukrainian people did. But the entirety of NATO had already was like, Russia's going to get Ukraine. We give it, we, we'd fucking, we'd already given it up. But obviously the Ukrainians did a lot better than anybody suspected they would do. And the Russians did a lot worse. But now the Russians, but now the Russians are fighting like it's a war before they weren't before they were fighting. Like it's an American. We're just going to run up the fucking alley, raise the flag and it'll be good. But now they're, they're fighting like it's a war. And so they're systematically taking that country apart. So I wonder what the percentage of people there in Ukraine, if you put it to a vote, like how many want to be Russians? How many don't want to be? I wonder what that vote would look like if, if put to the people. Hey, do you mind being, would you like to be a Russian citizen? Uh, before the Russians attacked, the number was probably way higher. But now that the, now that the, now that the Russians are systematically annihilating everywhere they go, there's not, a, there, it's not, doesn't look good for Russia citizenship. What do you think's happening in Sudan? Oh, just normal Sudan. Yeah, shit. it's normal. It's normal Africa shit. It's normal. It's normal tribal uh, tribal shit. So what am I hearing? Delta Delta went in, rescued some people, and now there's a big, um, everybody's up in arms over U.S. citizens uh, being left there and they weren't all evacuated. Uh, Jeremy said, well, you need to realize that a lot of those people that we're calling uh, U.S. citizens have never even stepped foot in the United States. Those people, have they're not people from the United States. Well, uh, uh, Here's here is the issue with that statement. Okay. If you are a US citizen. Okay. If you are a US citizen, it doesn't matter where you're at in the world. I think what he's saying is they're not actually US citizens. Well, if they're not US citizens, then that's that's different. But when I'm if you're a US citizen, it doesn't matter where you're at in the world, and it doesn't matter when the last time yeah, you were not, back in the I don't States. I don't think I think it's not but like uh, the, the people that they're they're using they're saying and I don't know. The re but it's not like you and your wife were over there and had a child. The reason why people are actually up in arms about U.S. citizens not being evacuated is because everybody else in the free world did it. The French evacuated their citizens. The Germans evacuated their citizens. I everybody I, else did. And what did we do? We were like, hey, uh, uh, special detachment of Green Berets that are in Sudan, you guys need to get out. <laughs> That's what all we Is did. Is that what we did? Yeah, that's all we did. We just pulled out the we just pulled out the military attaché and we we pulled out the we pulled out the usual suspects, meaning anybody that was in the embassy, anybody who was at the uh, um, I can't think of the name of the, the place they call that where the 
where the CIA has their listening posts. Anybody that was in any of those, but we pulled those people out. But if, but is if, it, if, is it Liberia? Liberia. There's a CIA. The whole, oh yeah, the whole any, little country there is all CIA. Anywhere, anywhere that there is a, uh, anywhere where there is a, an embassy, there's also an offsite. There's also an offsite CIA um, collection point where they're actually doing collection under the guise of of the embassy, but it's 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 the CIA listening to whatever you know, like like when the the papers came out and they're like. We're listening to what the South Koreans are saying and shit like that. We know that because the CIA is like right there. <clears throat> so I thought it odd that night the President Biden was on television. He's like, we've evacuated people to the extent that we can. And I'm like, well, what the fuck does that mean? That means that he has a, he has a staff. He has a, he has a civilian staff that advise him on what he can do. And he has a military staff that advise them on what they can do. And they're all idiots. Does anybody advise them on what we should do? They're all idiots. And, and, and the reality is, the, the his civilian staff, his civilian staff, they are they are advising him completely from the optics side of the house. So what they're saying is, hey, you probably shouldn't do anything because if something happens and it makes you look bad, it's better to do nothing, right? And that's and then the military side of the house because again. All his fucking generals are are woke. Weirdos. They're like, well, we don't even know if we can do anything either because, you know, we just don't know because they don't do anything anymore. So so what's what's going on in Sudan? Why are all these people being pulled out? Who is it being pulled out? Is it all, all white folks being pulled out? Or? Yeah, basically it's all, it's all well, uh, if, from a... From an African point of perspective, let's go from an African point of perspective. It's the it's the colonials, That's right? All the colonials are getting pulled out. So Europe and yeah, any 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 colonial face is getting pulled out. Which again, you know what? So Why not? Talking, this we, is the this is the this you know, Elon wants to go to Mars. Why not let Africa govern itself? And if they wipe each other off the face of the planet, that's just the learning curve. So. Do you think, um, like it, does this have anything to do with like with Nigeria? The president of Nigeria came out a couple of weeks ago, as well as the presidents of a lot of other places in Africa, and said, dump your U.S. dollar. It is going to be of zero value. Is this, is this all manipulated through that? You think this is China's road and belt initiative and no, China is implementing this to push? This is, this is a, a, uh, a common African problem. The common African problem is, unfortunately, um, when you, when you were in an African state, um, the state, while we talk about corruption here, we don't, we like, we're not even, we're not even close. The, the corruption level at the state level in, in African countries is so immense that even the military, um, even the military in any of these African countries is like, um, you know, if, if I go fight, if I join the, if I'm a, let's say I'm a colonel in whatever army and I go fight for the rebellion, I go and join the, join the natives and fight for the rebellion. What I do is I attack the government until it gets to a point where the government goes, Hey John, check it out. You know, you were a sergeant in the Congolese army. We're going to make you a colonel. If you stop all this bullshit and then they make you a colonel and you're getting paid more and you go back in. So it's the corruption level is just at such a high level over there. That's what's going on right now. You have the Sudis, you have the Sudanese military and uh, uh, the government going after each other because they're just the every, you know, unfortunately for Africa as a continent is whether that's colonials or people who were born and raised there. They just, they just rape themselves. They're just, they just, it's, there is a culture over there of stealing and stealing and stealing and. Are we there? Because What are we gaining from there? Like, are we there just to keep China out or why are, why are we there? Uh, again, it's, it's a little bit of, it's a little bit of pushback on China and it's a little bit of where resources go. So what do we lose by leaving there? Nothing. I mean, the reality is nothing. I mean, you know, 
strategically what they're going to say is if China, if, if China takes over, uh, all those natural resources, all those resources will get taken to China. Um, but China has a, China has a problem in Africa. Okay. The, the problem in Africa is Africans. That's, yeah. And Africans digging wells and then they're shitting in them. Well, Africans don't like Chinese people any more than anybody else. Like when you, when you do an African, when you, when the Chinese do a road initiative and they're like, Hey, we're going to build this road through your town. And the president's like, yes. And they bring a half a million Chinese workers in and those Chinese workers make that road. The, the regular Africans aren't happy about that road because they didn't get the jobs. The Chinese, they brought Chinese people in and these Chinese people have money. And so these Chinese people are walking around taking advantage of the depressed economy that you live in, right? That the African lives in. So they don't like, they don't like Chinese people any more than they like people from France. They don't like them. And so when China does step in, when they do, do this think- a road initiative and China does step in and they <clears throat> overthrow the, they overthrow the president of whatever country this is. And they're like, we now own this road. The people aren't going to stand for that. And the Chinese don't have the capability. They don't have the, they don't have the lift capability like the United States where they can put a division of troops over there and quell the Congo. The fucking Congo is going to eat those people. They're going to eat the Chinese alive with, with people from Africa, not liking them. Do you think that's the majority of people or just a small percentage of them? Uh, It's it's probably majority. Like when I, I met a dude, a month or so ago that had spent a bunch of time over there riding all around on, on adventure bikes. Right. And he's like, most African people like U S citizens. Like he, I'm like, cause I asked him, I said, did you ever feel like you were in danger? He said, no, everybody's very friendly over there. But I mean, he would be over there with a little bit of money and taking advantage of the depressed economy. So, I mean, I would think as a, as a single or small pocket of that's, that's people, you'd be easily be disappeared. That's a little different though. That's a that's a uh, an individual who's on holiday who's not staying. So the, people, the difference between the Chinese, when when the the difference between the Chinese and people on holiday, is when the Chinese bring a million workers down to build it. that road, they're leaving them there, because the Chinese have a problem with too many men. Yeah, people don't realize they're yeah. exporting their they're, single. They're, they're single exporting people. their single men. They leave them there, so. It becomes a problem. You don't speak the language. Do you think those Chinese people, like, uh, while they're building, obviously they have support, they have food they're used to and everything, but when the Chinese leave them there... Yeah, they're, they're eating they're whatever just like, the hey, local, you guys are Africans now. They're, they're doing whatever the, you know, road initiative tells them to do. Do you yeah. think that... So the diplomats we pulled out, Yeah. do you think they're like, fuck, about, thank God I get to, I'm home, right? Or do you think they're like, man, I was having the time of my life having adventures... No, they're they're happy to be out of there. They're happy when they when they usually usually when they pull an embassy, like when they when they pull an embassy, um, there's a there is definite credible there's definable credible source threat of violence. Meaning there, everybody in the embassy is already like, uh, you should have pulled us out two weeks ago. Because again, the the people in the embassy are outside of the case officers. They're all as woke as you can get and they're soft they don't gunshots they don't want none of that bullshit they don't so they're they're ready to go so when you're over there in an embassy mm-hmm. do you stay in the embassy most of the time like 100 percent, or are you safe to leave the embassy oh if you work in an embassy uh usually yes usually uh usually you know for the most part um embassy duty is pretty safe people don't want to snatch up u.s citizens they do but in those in those places where in those places where an embassy is uh, where there's that possibility, they mitigate it. There's a lot of things that they can do to mitigate that. Like whenever you hear about like um, you know, uh, my dad was an ambassador and I grew up overseas. Uh, they didn't go like if you're the if you're the ambassador in Singapore, you're not going. The, your kids aren't going to a Singapore school. They're going to the school of America's, which is on the embassy compound, which is staffed. And so, you know, you're, you're, you're pretty, you're pretty safe. I mean, for the most part, outside of, outside of extreme, uh, government destabilization, embassies aren't, I mean, I don't know how many embassies we have around the world, but they're, they're pretty safe. Did you see Warren Buffett pulled all his money out of Singapore or out of uh, Taiwan? 
And when they questioned him about that, he said that uh, Taiwan might have um, some severe seismic activity. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> so Maybe. that Taiwan's going to have an earthquake. So we pulled all my money out of or there. a large or a, or a large amount of artillery. Yeah, it was just it was weird. Large His artillery. reaction was just yeah. fucking asinine. Yeah. So, whatever Warren. Bu- I mean, if Warren Buffett says it, some yeah. people will say that's hand of God. Well, he bought all the train lines right before the oil pipeline was shut yeah. down. Um, so when California. It has all their civil unrest or New York or wherever. Hopefully that shit just stays on the coast and the federal government's so busy trying to get a hand back on that that they just leave us the fuck alone. Uh wildfire. It'll be it'll spread like a fire. If 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 you see if you see some some really uh shot hurt around the world. Some really militia you know, uh let's say just militia type stuff going on in California. People will view that as an opportunity to clean their houses wherever they're at. Do you think it'll be militia as an organized militia like we currently think? Or do you think it'll just be small pockets of small na- pockets neighbors everywhere. handling yeah. their shit? Small pockets everywhere. <clears throat> Law enforcement kind of look the other way. It just depends on how big it is. If it's, if it's big, like if it's really big... Yes, law enforcement will stay the fuck out of it. I feel like when that happens, law enforcement's probably not showing up to work. Well, that's what I'm saying. They'll they'll stay the fuck out if it's big enough. They'll stay the fuck out of it because you you know that that's the the problem with red versus blue in this scenario is is it red versus blue or is it just fucking it's red versus blue. That's that's the problem with the tidal wave. The problem with the tidal wave is you know right now you have you right now you have uh, blue out there. Doing whatever it wants. Blue is doing whatever it wants, whenever it wants, no consequences. And red is at home watching it on TV going, glad I don't live in California anymore. That's what red's doing. But when red decides that enough is enough, nobody's going to be like, nobody's going to be like, oh, you... You voted for Trump the first time, but the second time, nobody's going to do that. Nobody, they're not going to be asking any questions. They're going to see your bumper sticker. They're going to see your mailing it. They're going to see that you've registered as a Democrat and you are now the problem. That tidal wave is terrible. Now that could go either way. I mean, that's the reality is the way it goes right. It's the way it's going right now, right? If you're, if you're a Democrat, anybody who's a Republican is terrible, is evil. They're the devil, right? That's the way they look at it now. And if the Democrats could, I promise you they would start putting us on trains and taking us to camps if they could, but they don't have the capability. The difference is red does red has the capability to clean house. What is that capability? What do you mean? A fucking, you know, hundred skills and equipment, skills, equipment, guns, willingness. No, no, we don't have the willingness. We don't have the willingness yet that's why all this stuff is being it's it's why like you know the democrats have been able to do all the crazy shit that they've been able to do because that spark hasn't been lit yet do you think that'll happen in all states well i think it it'll start it'll start in one state and it'll spread across the country if you again if somebody starts cleaning house somewhere everybody's going to think oh this is the opportunity to clean house <clears throat> And that will lead to civil war, or that will be the civil that war? That will be the civil war. That will be it. It won't lead to it. It'll be it. And, you know. Yeah, people look at the Revolutionary War, and they you, you talk about a small piece of it, but they don't realize the several years leading up to that. Yeah. I mean, I, I again, don't think I'm rooting for this. I'm not rooting for no, this. Because it's you. not. Yeah, I don't. It's I, not. I have stuff I want to do with my I'm not, time, not that. Yeah, I'm not romanticizing any of this. It's not going to be good. I, you know, again. I, you know, from a, from a right leaning perspective, I, I worry, I worry for the left. I worry for those Americans that are on the left. Because again, when, when the time comes for that tidal wave to happen, no one is going to ask you, were you a moderate? Um, How did you view the world? Do you love your children? Nobody's going to ask that. They're just going to be like, all of this is your fucking fault. And that'll be the end of it. <coughs> and it, so, again, you know, 
I don't care. Here's the thing. I'm not for cattle cars. I'm not for cattle cars. I'm not for cattle cars for the left and I'm not for cattle cars for the right. I'm, I'm not in favor of either or if the government, whether that's red or blue, uh, starts putting people in cattle cars, I'm going to be there to help stop it. Even if you have, you know, a penis, you're wearing a dress, you have purple hair and, uh, whatever. I don't care because that's not what America is about. So, or at least not America, not America that I believe in. So anyways, yeah, I hope it doesn't happen, but mm -hmm. the, the, it seems like the Dems are doing everything they can <clears throat> doing everything they can to push the right into a civil war. Yeah, and it, what, it doesn't turn out the way they think it does. Yeah, what you're talking about actually happened in the lead up to, uh, you know, the Revolutionary War. You had you had pockets of people, and when it got to the point where we said, no, we're not, we're not doing that, um, the people who still supported the crown, um, groups of people went out and swayed them. And if they were not swayed, they were making them ride wooden horses is what they called it, right? So it was basically a triangular piece of wood. And they would put somebody on this thing and tie them to it, and they would shake it up and down to the point where it would cut their growing, and they would bleed to death. And there's there's a lot. I'm reading a book right now. Yeah. I've, I've not read a book in 15 years probably. Well, that's the, that's the, uh, um, that's actually the, 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 that's the actually where the three percent comes from, is what most people don't know that if you think about the the, the United States, it was only three percent of the population that wanted that. Only three percent. It only took three percent for us to fight the British, and become America. Everybody else wanted to be royal subjects. Right. So when you think about three percent, what's three percent? I mean, three percent is nothing. Right. If you if you had to give I don't know, if you had to give three percent of your paycheck every month to charity, you you wouldn't notice it eventually. But if you take three percent of all the Americans in the United States, it's a war. Yeah, and it's most a and war. most of those people that would be those three, they are all trained. Yeah. The majority of them are trained. Typically when you see a, a three percent shirt or whatever, it's a goober. Yeah, I mean it, it. It gets it gets like, cosplayed. I, I think you could buy three percent at Walmart now. Yeah, right? yeah, it gets it gets cosplayed, and that you know, like when it's on the FBI's most wanted list. It's, yeah, when you it's when you see cosplay, when it's you not see from a real three percent sticker, that ain't those guys. You know, it's like uh, it's like um, <laughs> it's like the FBI uh, profiling people wearing Hawaiian shirts. Well, there's a whole for the boogaloo. It's there's just, a whole vocabulary I didn't know mm -hmm. existed until that all got busted out. Like, what's a Chad? Oh, uh, uh, I don't know what a Chad is. If, if you if you're a Chad, that's a that's a bad term for the FBI. Three um, percent um, trad is bad, right? Trad, traditional. Yeah, traditional. traditional. My old traditional ways. I just saw Shapiro reacting to a a video of a trad housewife, and I always thought trad like was going to be a a lesbian chick or something. You know, I think turf is uh, trans, uh, a, a lesbian that doesn't like trans people, I think is true. I don't know. But Chad is like a, a chick that's dressed up like the 1950s or 60s, like Betty Homemaker, you know, and her job is to uh, have the house ready and make her husband happy when he gets home and he goes out and earns the money and she raises the kids. And We call it, in, in the modern world, we call that a sub. A submissive? Yeah. I, I just call it sub. Yeah, I mean, it, in Leave It to Beaver, it was just the wife, you know. Yeah. Um, so Shapiro's reacting. He's like, "Okay, I don't, I don't see the problem here." And then a Kool Aid hair fucking pops up, and it's just like losing her shit over this. Again, here's the the crazy thing about it is the Kool Aid hair, right? Why is she mad? Yes, that's what my why, point. Why is right. she mad? Why is the other side always mad? But why is she mad? Why does she care what your side does? Why is she mad that this why is she mad that this lady prefers to live her life in this in this meeting? Why is she mad? You, you could say it's you could really say, "Hey Kool-Aid lady, it's really none of your fucking business." And that's more important cuz it, it's crazy when you think about it. Like when you think about them they're mad that this lady is is acting this way, right? When you think about the left, what the left really wants is to be able to do what the left does and 
the right mind your own fucking business, right? It's like mind your own fucking business. But that's not what but they But that's want. not what they want. No, that, that's it not is what not they what they want. Because if because if you take whatever whatever thing it is you believe, right? Mm -hmm. I believe whatever. Like alligators should have wings, right? And I make a video about how I alligators should have wings. What do you fucking care what weirdo shit I think, right? Unless right. you're worried and you don't believe in your shit enough that your children are going to start believing that alligators should have wings, right? right? Why do you have to push it on somebody or use physical violence to get them to accept your way of thinking? If right? your argument is so weak, <laughs> if your argument is so weak that your, that your children are, can watch a podcast and be like, hmm, I don't really believe purple should be the color of your hair. Then your argument has always been weak. <laughs> it's just, that's just it. Your argument is weak. Who, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's crazy. It's a crazy, crazy mad world. Uh, what are you going to do? Do you think that 90% of the population doesn't know? Doesn't care, really. Do you think they know, though? Like, because I think 90% of the people just, like, actually follow or, or get well, their news I, I, from mainstream media and just realize they just think that's how shit is. They don't know there's something else. I think that, uh, I think when we talk about the far left, um, you know, and everything that's going on in the world, we're talking about 3%. Again, remember, 3% a war. 3% is nothing. Like, if, if you had a car that malfunctioned 3% of the time, you, they wouldn't even do a recall. It's it's not worth the, like, for example, the Food and Drug Administration. If three percent of the time this pill killed people, which it does, they wouldn't even they would still approve it and they wouldn't recall it. They'd be like, it the benefits outweigh the costs. Who gives a shit? But on the left side of the house, you have three percent that is screaming their heads off. I think it's less than that, and. It, it may very well be less than that. But you have 3% that are screaming their heads off about all the woes and wees about how terrible their life is because they're terrible people, really. And we are we are forming a society based off of those people. And that is going to be a serious problem. I, well, I think that's the powers that be, right? Well, I yeah. Think that's just for distraction. We amplify, we suppress your views or messages or ability to communicate. And then we amplify the absolute most insane so that we'll just fight about it, right? We'll talk about it. We'll do these podcasts about it. We'll so when the when the Roman Empire collapses, collapsing. When the Roman Empire collapses, the uh, the people won't even know that it happened, and the emperors will still be emperors. They'll just call them something different, right? You know. So silent majority. That's what, that's my thing. Is the silent majority is going to eventually? I think that I think. I think the problem with rich people or with the, the people who actually run shit around the world is they're thinking medieval times, right? They're thinking medieval times and they actually think that somehow they're going to take this world and, and turn it back into serfdoms where you're going to have kings and a bunch of people out eating gruel and while they farm your food and you fly around in a jet airplane. As you, as you exponentially grow something, as something becomes exponentially bigger, it becomes harder to control. There's too many people in the world. Well, I think that's why they want to reduce it, right? So yeah, we there's just, too many people just, in the world. As long as, as long as your water runs and you're warm or you're cold when you want to be and you have this entertainment. But there's a, there's a highly probable possibility, there's a highly probable possibility that we see a future where none of that shit works. And do you think anybody's going to be like, Oh, Bill Gates, thank you for your mystery meat. No, they're not going to be happy about it. They're not, they're, you know, they're not. But you want, it only takes a generation. It's right? just, if, if, we can, yeah. if we can just have the kids eat just McDonald's and give them that, they'll be fine when all there is is McDonald's. Maybe. Or maybe they won't. So my thought is the silent majority. You don't listen to, you don't listen to the music that your grandfather listened to. I don't even know. Yeah, I don't even know what. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, though. It, uh, again, every <clears throat> every generation wants to rebel against the generation before it. So my my feeling is that the silent majority, you guys need to stop being silent. You don't have to get on the rooftops, and you don't have to light yourself on fire, and you don't have to don't light yourself on fire. You don't have to cut your tits off for attention or whatever. Just you just need to have a conversation with a couple of other people, face to face, right? Because they're going to go someplace, and they're going to. And if you do that. 
you don't have to put it out public, right? You don't have to skyline yourself. You just have to have the fucking conversation. And we used to do that in churches or wherever that used to happen, right? So if we remove God, whether, whether they believe in God or not, whatever the fuck it is you believe, but if you remove God, you remove the Ten Commandments and you lose the structure, right? And what gets replaced with that? And you, there's a ton of, if you look at Hollywood, it's all satanic. Everything is satanic. Whether you believe it or not, whatever it is, the fact is that it is there. And you've lost your societal structure. And they've just, it's being destroyed. And I don't care what you believe in, but you better fucking, you better believe in something. And you better have those conversations because your pocket of freedom right now is being encroached on. And if you don't, if you're not willing to have the conversation, it's going to be too late by the time you decide to. And, and don't, uh, don't kid yourself that this experiment that is the United States, it's never happened before. It's just this, this has always been, a, the United States has always been a thorn in the side of people who want to rule the world. So when we talk about that pocket of freedom, Contrary to what you believe, uh, and contrary to what you're being told every night on the news, more people have been brought out of poverty through the creation of the United States of America than any other time in our history. Any other time in history. We continue to bring people out of poverty. When the United States exists no longer, that is over. Our homeless people are in the 5% of income earners in the world. So, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, but community. Community is very important. Meet your neighbor. Find out who he is, especially if he's blue. <laughs> community is very important. Do you have blue neighbors? Do I have a blue neighbor? I mean, I, I guess I guess Mrs. Carter would probably... Uh, but she doesn't even know anymore. Yeah, I guess Mrs. Carter would probably be labeled as blue. Um, I would assume that she thinks she's a Democrat. Uh, but there's no. Uh, she doesn't realize the Democrats. Yeah, that it doesn't exist. It it's not. Yeah, it's not the. It's not what it used to be. There, there. You know, it's not. I would say, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a Kennedy Democrat. They don't. Kennedy Democrats. If you're a Kennedy Democrat, you're a hardcore Republican now. What do you think of the current Kennedy? Um, I, I'm surprised. He's been way too. He's been. He's been way too marginalized. But I'm surprised that the interview with tucker carlson hasn't got him i mean i wouldn't be surprised if he has an accident a stroke or something very soon um because you can't you know the reality is everybody in congress is getting paid by big pharma all the news outlets are getting paid by big pharma and so the re you know big pharma goes like this and tucker carlson's gone it <laughs> he's not gone well i mean He's gone from only for a minute for Fox News, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, but Fox. I mean, <laughs> what is Fox News right now compared to what they were ten years yeah, ago I know. or twenty years no, ago? They right? they they have been. Good you had CNN and you had Fox News. Again, That's all there was. Again, those agencies. The you know what people, what people don't want to, don't want to believe is if you're watching CNN or you're watching Fox News. The money goes to the same pocket. Yeah, same same people on them. <laughs> same people. It goes to the same pocket, right? They're they're all they're it's all going to the same pocket, so it doesn't fucking matter what you believe in. So what, you, what does matter? Uh that you don't watch any of that bullshit. Grow your own food. Learn how to grow your own food. Just definitely. something. You don't have to produce all of your food. Just grow something. Something Just grow of something. your own food. Yep. Get a chicken. Raise your children. Maybe two or three chickens. Raise your kids. If you've already raised your kids, help raise your grandkids. Just fucking just become a business owner of some sort. When you when you produce something that brings in revenue, you see things differently. Don't uh, stay out of stay out of national politics. Stay in local politics. Be, get in local politics. No matter how much you say you don't want to, that's what you can actually affect. Yeah, stay in local politics. Who cares about what they're doing? I mean, because we can't do anything about what office or White you House for. Uh, I would like to run for sheriff. Why don't you? Because have, have you met your sheriff? I'm yeah, I know my sheriff. Because I'm uh, waiting for my judge to get here. Would he support you? Our sheriff? Yeah. No. Uh, no. Uh, they already have a. 
They already have somebody like grooming. they're grooming for. It is very um. What do you call it? What's that, Brandon? What's it called when you hire all your relatives? It's called a DNA job. No, it's a that's a specific term. It's a uh, um. Fuck, I can't think of the name of it. Uh, it's a specific term when you when you hire all your relatives and uh, or not necessarily relatives, but your own. you your your own people when it's all in your own. House. Nope, it's not in house. There's a specific legal term for it, and they uh they do that here a lot. Like you gotta you gotta know the guy to know the guy to get elected. I mean our our Good sheriff old boys network. Our sheriff has been <laughs> like our sheriff has actually been videotaped running down a street naked from some uh somebody's wife's house and still got reelected. Like that's the kind of no, it's not gerrymandering. It's something, something. Nepotism. Something. Nepotism. A lot of nepotism here. What'd a lot of go- nepotism. What'd you Google to find that? What's it called when you hire only relatives? <laughs> yeah. A lot of nepotism here in this in this area. A lot of nepotism, and, and it's it's kind of going away a little bit because of the influx of people that moved into Waverly. So there's a lot of there's a lot of outside influences. So some of that nepotism is not get all killed. good outside influence. So a lot of those are no, fucking, I know, yeah, yeah. 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 They, we le- you left California you, and they want this to be. You California. run away from you run away from California because the liberal dream that you thought was going to happen in California didn't work out for you, and you you still aspire the same terrible politics in the states that you ran to because they're free. We see that a lot. You see people in like the freedom movement or the homesteading I don't, movement I th- or whatever, I think, and I'm like, hey. Your liberal is showing. I I think, I think that uh, Texas, Florida, you guys need to pass a law that says if you move here from a blue state, you are not allowed to vote <laughs> for at least five years. You have to be a resident in the state for five years before you can vote. Because again, you guys are fleeing those states. Whether it's because the taxes are too high or because there's homeless people everywhere, it's your politics. Your particular brand of politics that has created that virus that you were fleeing from. Well, if they would just have uh, um, voter ID laws, you wouldn't have any of these fucking problems. I, I mean, in California, I don't think it matters. I don't, you have two. You have you know the reality is the governor of the state is elected. The governor of the state is elected by two places: San Francisco and Los Angeles. As long as you control those two metropolitans, it doesn't matter that the rest of the state is red. It doesn't matter that the rest of the state is red because you have those two heavy blue states of population. So it's it's the it's your liberal democrat democratic party policies that has ruined the state of California. And when I say ruined, I get it. Yeah, look at it. I mean they defunded the police in San yeah. Francisco. Now they're calling for the National Guard. I get it. You've got a six figure job. <clears throat> you're making good money. So you're living a better life. Rest of California is not. Rest of California, you know, the rest of California that aren't making six-figure jobs, they're not living a better life because your politics is ruining that state. So. There you go. Move back to California and fix your own problems. I'm not moving back to California. I have too many guns, guys. Can't can't go back to California. They're all illegal in California, so can't go back. I, I would. I didn't bring any California problems here. I, I did. Well, I do have California problems. Like what? I do have California problems that I that I uh that I'm not sure I should have, but I do have California problems. Okay. Like lighting a fire. Like when I have when I have a fire I want to light. <laughs> you have California fear. I have California fear. Like I, 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 I look around But your but like your I fear sure, your fear doesn't affect anybody in a negative manner. No, no. I make sure that the ground is clear for a hundred yards in every direction. And even here's the crazy part. Even when the fire is like burned down to embers. Like when you the fire still put water on it. When the fire is burned down to embers, I'm like, I better fire watch. Yeah, I better fire watch this. Smokey the bear says it's the wind blows, the whole forest is gonna catch on fire. So I'm I'm very I'm very uh, California about my fire my fires and fireworks. I'm a little sketchy on fireworks too, even though you can like set off a thermal nuclear device in Tennessee and it's okay. Um, a little sketchy about fireworks, and then what else? There was something else, and it, still even with the guns. I'm a little sketchy about the guns. Like I like, I like to capture and keep all my bullets. So here in Tennessee, people will just 
people will just be like, nope, doesn't look like anybody's over there. Let's fire it up. And you they'll just, you'll see, see people shoot right in the woods. I'm like, you know, there's a house. They'll just I start, can see the house through the woods. Like, I'll, give you exa- I'll give you an example. This is a crazy thing. So before we bought the church, my neighbor owned the church. Now my fence line goes right up to the back of his church. Everything behind everything behind the church belongs to me. He has a church group over and they're going to shoot guns. So they set up a bunch of targets towards your house. At the church towards my field. Like I'm in the house. I'm in the house and I'm like somebody's shooting at the house. No, can't be. Can't be. So I go outside and I go towards the barn and pew, pew, pew. I'm looking I'm like what the fuck? So I, I kind of creep up the hill a little bit and I see where they're shooting and where the bullets are going. And they're all going in my field. Like nobody can he didn't come down and be like, Hey, we're going to, or, or, Hey, are we're going to aerate your grass. Are your cows out here? <laughs> well, I, at the time well, we didn't have any cows. So he's like, we're going to aerate your grass up in your field. And it was an open field, but I could have walked up there and yeah, he doesn't know shot. if anybody's I didn't know. there. It's just crazy. It's just, it's Tennessee's a little more, I mean, again, you own that. And it, the weird part about that is nobody has backstops and they shoot wherever they want to shoot. And in Tennessee, you own the bullet. So if I shoot through the woods and, you know, fire up Granny's car with the – I, I'm liable for whatever that is. So I don't right. understand why they're not more – but so I, you know, I build backstops. How and far shoot. will like a, a three oh eight or thirty out six round travel? Uh, max Ord is far. Like Max Ord on all – if you're Max Ording – like meaning, if I take the gun yeah. and I put it up, I put, hold it up like this. You're Make talking travel as far as you're travel. talking miles, right? Uh, now, again, if you're in the prone and you're shooting, until it hits something. If you're in the prone and you're shooting, well, even if the, even if, for example, if you're in the desert, there's nothing, and you lay in the prone and you shoot. Well, your max or is going to be as far as the projectile can go without gravity affecting it. So, not even. Well, 308, probably, what's the drop on that? You probably get 350 yards before it's buried in the dirt. You just need to buy a couple miles worth of property. Or you just need to make sure you have a backstop. Right, that you right, shoot and into educate and, your neighbors. And educate your neighbors so they don't blast in, your... In not an asshole manner. So they don't blast your neighbor. Because even when I... <laughs> this is funny. When I first got there, the guy that owned the property, I said, hey... You know, I'm walking around the place, and a lot of my stuff is kind of elevated. <coughs> so he was talking about that he's got an AR-15, and he likes to shoot all the time. And uh, he likes to shoot all the time. So we're walking the property, and I'm like, when you shoot, where do you shoot? Where do you, where's, the, where's the spot on your property that you shoot, where you do all your shooting at? And he's like, he looks at me, he's like, I don't understand. I go, where do you, you know, where is it that you, you shoot from to, to and from? And like that, he goes, wherever I want. It's my property. Which really means that the bullet is never landing on your property. It's always landing on some. Now, again, I live in a pretty rural area. And so I am sure that there's a lot of getaway, a lot of getaway stuff. Fuck yeah, there is. <laughs> a lot of getaway stuff. But again, I like to trap my bullets. I like to, I don't, I don't want, I don't want one of my neighbors to be like, I got a broken window. We had a kid that worked for us, and he would just go down to the, <coughs> like the train tracks. Oh yeah, and just shoot. shoot the length of the fucking train. Cody's like, "Hey, yeah, that's not gonna work." Yeah, yeah. There's a there's it's a little country out here, and so I'm a little. I'm, I still so don't move here because it's dangerous for you guys. Yeah, I, I still have a little California in that in that sense. I try not to anything that anything that I that gets me mad. Or not mad, because I don't get mad anymore. Anything that gets me, like, irritated, I like to, in my head, go, is that a California thing? Am I, <laughs> am I, is this, have I been conditioned to see this thing as bad when I really shouldn't even care? And usually it's, I really shouldn't even care. And yeah, it doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect me whatsoever. Yep. All right, guys. Well, that's uh, episode 24. 24. Pulling the Thread podcast. Did you know that 19 was stricken from the catalog? No. Uh, yeah. It's actually there. It's just not on YouTube. We got, we got, uh, it, they pulled it down. YouTube yeah, deleted yeah. it. It's actually on 
Patreon. Okay, Patreon. Because I, I got somebody was like, "You guys are releasing your, you guys are releasing your podcast all screwed up." And I'm like, "What are you talking about? Who is this? Why don't they just come work here for us?" I'm like, "What are you talking about?" Because it went sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and then twenty. And I'm like, oh, "I went. We got, we got ousted because I was, uh, I was giving medical advice on how for, you can hey, get whoever you are." Five dollars, bro. <laughs> Breast enlargements in Mexico for the cheap, cheap prices, and so is they, that what it was? They stricken it. No, it's because I said the three things. Okay, I don't know what they are, but don't say them. <laughs> you know, I said, I said. The three.